Hey guys, so we want to start looking at algebra and if you know anything about algebra you'll know that we use letters to represent numbers and as you learn more and more maths you'll see how useful this can be. So let's, um, let's go back to our function machines and have a look at what we were doing before. So we had our function machine, here's one that times is numbers by 5. So if I put in a number like 2, I times it by 5 and I get out an answer of 10. So I've got an input and I've got an output. And I could put in any any number that I wanted to. We tried a few different numbers and we could get out different answers. Um, but what I could do is I could say, right, well, what if I put in a generic number? Let's put in this word number and see what happens. So we put our put it into our function machine and the function machine says, well, whatever this number is, you times it by five. So we'll do that number times by five. And you know, that is basically algebra, but it takes us a long time to write out words. So do you know what? I'm gonna change this for a letter instead. Why don't we call it n? N for number. So whatever our number is, we put it into our function machine. The function machine says, right, I've got a number n, whatever it is, we'll times it by five. So whatever it is, we just times it by five. So we have the number n and we times it by five, and that's what we'll get out as our answer. And actually I could, if I wanted to, put in uh, other letters. I could put in a different letter. Let's put in the letter L. Okay, so the, you know, put that into my function machine. The function machine says, All right, I've got a I've got a number here, I'm not sure what it is. It's called L. Um, but we're going to do L and we're going to times it by 5. Okay, I could put in a different letter, whatever you want. Okay, uh, sometimes we use the letter X in maths. So the function machine takes the letter or the number X, whatever number it represents, and it does X and then it times it by 5. But there's a bit of a problem here, isn't there? Because if we're using letters uh, X and multiply look very similar don't they so let's think about what we can do to try and solve this problem so if I was using um, n before as I was before put it in my number machine I did n I times it by 5 and I got 5 times n oops n times 5 now there are other ways we can write this to try and get rid of the um, multiply symbol so that you know we can understand what we're doing a bit more clearly. So in this bubble over here, um, I've written three different things, and they all mean exactly the same thing. So we had our number, we times it by five, and that is the same, isn't it, as having five and timesing it by my number? Okay, because multiplication has this property um, that's called being commutative. Okay, the order doesn't matter. And if I wrote it like this, five times n. You know, I could also write it like this, 5n, because 5 times n just means 5 groups of n. And so here I've got my 5 groups of n, I've got 5n's. Okay, so so these all mean the same thing. Okay, so if you see um, a number written next to a letter, it means that you've got that many of that letter, or you've got that many groups of that letter, or you've got that number multiplied by that letter. They all, all mean the same thing. So if I had a slightly longer function machine, let's say I had this one here, and I put in the number n, whatever that represents. So here, we're gonna put in the number n, so we're gonna have five n's, because we're gonna times it by five, so I'll have five n's, and then we're gonna add on two. So for our function machine, we're, we're gonna end up with an answer of whatever five n is, plus two. Okay, now, a word of warning here because we, when, when the function machines get a little bit longer we need to be careful that we are following our order of operations correctly. So what do I mean by this? So um, if I had um, this function machine here, so here we had n, we times it by 5 so that made 5n and then we added on 2 so that made 5n plus 2. Okay. Here on this second um, function machine, I've swapped around the operations. And let's just see what happens now. Okay, so I have a number and I add two onto it. So that means now, now I'm gonna have my number plus two. Okay, then I times it by five. But if I wrote this, if I wrote 
n plus 2 times by 5. If I was following my um, order of operations correctly, I'd do the 2 times 5 bit first, wouldn't I? But actually, we need to times all of this by 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in these things called brackets. And that just means that we have to do this bit first, and then we can times it by 5. So just be careful when you're writing out the answer um, from your function machine when you're using letters. Okay, we need to make sure we're doing things in the correct order. Okay, so that's a quick look at using letters with your function machines. Hey guys, so we can use what we know about function machines to help us solve problems. So here I've got a couple of problems, let's have a look at them. So the first one here says I think of a number, I add 8 to my number and the answer is 26. And I want to know what the original number was and I can use my function machine to help me. So I think of a number. Okay, I don't know what it is yet, so I'm going to call it n, n for number. So my number, whatever it is, uh, I then have to add on 8. So I'm going to add 8. And that gives me an, an answer of 26. Now, we said if we want to go backwards along function machines and go back to where we started, we need to do the inverse operations. We need to do the opposite of what we've done in our function machine. So what's the opposite of adding 8? If I add on 8 to something, I want to go back to where I started. I'm going to have to take away 8, aren't I? So I'm going to take my number, 26, and I'm going to do the opposite here. I'm going to take away 8. So that means that we're going to have 26, take away 8. And if you're quicker than me, then maybe you can get it before me. The answer is 18. So that means that n, my number, was 18. So I can write n equals 18. The number was 18. All right. Um, do you know what? I, I could have picked any letter I wanted to. By the way, it doesn't have to be n. All right. Let's have a look at a slightly harder or longer question. So here we've got another number. Again, I don't know what this one is. Um, Maybe if this one's a different number, should we call this one? Let's give it a different letter. Let's say that this number is um, the letter, ooh, the letter, the letter A. Let's give it the letter A. So whatever my number is, A, I add three. Then I need to double it. So doubling it is the same as timesing it by two. And that gave me an answer of 32. Now I want to know what was my original number. What was it? I don't know what it was. So let's try and go the opposite along our um, function machine. Let's try and do the inverse operations. So what's the opposite of timesing by 2? The opposite of timesing by 2 is going to help me get backwards. So I'm going to do 32 and I'm going to do the opposite of timesing by 2. So 32 divided by 2 and that gives me 16. So now I've got 16. Now to get 16, um, I had to add 3 onto my number. So if I want to go backwards along my function machine again, I'm going to have to do the opposite of adding 3. So the opposite of adding 3 is taking away 3. And, um, and so 16 take away 3 is going to be 13. And so my answer here would be A equals 13. Now my number was 13. Now actually what you've been doing, without even realising it, is solving equations. So, well done. Josh Maths.